Shark External Anatomy The shark has a graceful and streamlined body shape built for fast, long-distance swimming. The body of the shark has the shape and proportions which are recognized as most advantageous for free-swimming animals. Fusiform shaped and pointed at each end, thus offering little resistance to the water. This remarkable body design was even adopted by man for him to be able to soar the skies. The body is divided into the head, trunk, and tail, which are not, however, distinctly bounded from one another. The shark's body skin coloration are mostly drably countershaded. This means that the top and bottom sides are colored differently, serving to camouflage the shark from multiple perspectives. The dorsal side is considerably darker than the ventral side. When the shark is viewed from above, its dark top surface blends into the dark ocean depths or ocean floor. When viewed from below, the light-colored belly blends in with the light above. This helps the shark hunt in a stealthy manner, enabling it to sneak upon the prey undetected. The skin of the shark, when felt, is rough. This is because the surface of the body is covered with many tiny placoid scales or dermal denticles, which are pointing backwards. This helps the shark swim more quickly by channeling the water flowing along the shark's body through grooves. Also, the shark's skin is so rough that contact with it can injure prey. Along the sides of the body is a light-colored horizontal stripe called the lateral line. This overlies the lateral line canal which contains sensory cells sensing to detect mechanical movement of water and sudden changes of pressure. The head is triangular and somewhat flattened. Its pointed extremity is known as the rostrum. This tapered top of the anterior end helps overcome water resistance in swimming. On the ventral side of the head is the curved, slit-like mouth composed of an upper and lower jaw, both of which bear a number of teeth arranged in diagonal rows. The structure of the teeth is quite similar to the placoid scales because it is believed that the teeth are evolutionary derived from the placoid scales. The size and shape of the teeth vary widely among sharks, depending on their food preferences. This species of shark is adapted to eating small fishes, cephalopods, and crustaceans. The teeth are arranged in rows, so when one tooth is changed or lost, it is replaced by another. Most sharks do not chew their food, but gob it down whole in large pieces. Their teeth are not able to chew food, but only to tear it into mouth-sized pieces. Although the eating function is evident, the mouth is also used for the intake of water that passes through the gills. Sharks also have taste buds in their mouth, but not in their tongue. A shark's tongue is called a basihia. A basihia is a small, thick, relatively immovable piece of cartilage that is found on the floor of the mouth of sharks. This structure is deemed to be useless for most sharks. Anterior to the mouth, we locate the two external nares. A nasal flap separates the incurrent from the excurrent opening. Water is taken into the smaller of the two openings and expelled to the larger opening. The water passes by a sensory membrane allowing the shark to detect chemicals in the water. Note how strong their sense of smell is. They can smell so well that they can detect a drop of blood in 25 gallons and can smell blood 0.4 kilometers away. Situated on the sides of the head are oval-shaped eyes. The eyes are prominent in sharks and are very similar to the eyes of man. A darkly pigmented iris can be seen below the cornea, with the pupil at its center. Upper and lower eyelids, which are considered rudimentary, protect the eye. Just inside the lower eyelid is a membrane that extends over the surface of the eye to cover the cornea. Behind each eye is a slight prominence best perceived by feeling it with the fingers, inside of which the internal ear is located. The ears are connected with the surface of the head by two canals, the endolymphatic ducts, which open by a pair of small pores in the center of the dorsal surface of the head just back of the level of the eyes. Large spherical openings are located posterior and dorsal to the eyes. 
The spiracle is an incurrent water passageway leading into the pharynx for respiration when the mouth is closed. And this represents a modified first pair of gill slits. A spiracular bulb permits the opening and closing of the external spiracular pore. The spiracle is thought to be homologous to the ear opening of higher invertebrates. Behind the mouth and in front of the pectoral fins, we could find the five external elongated gill slits, considered to be the second to the six gill slits. Adjacent slits are separated by a cartilaginous gill arch from which projects a long sheet-like septum, partly supported by a further piece of cartilage called gill ring. The gill is the respiratory organ found in many aquatic organisms like the shark. The individual lamellae of the gills lie in either side of the septum. The gills also have extensions called gill rakers that increases the surface area of gills in order to take in more oxygen. This organ extracts dissolved oxygen from water, afterward excreting carbon dioxide. It should be noted that the gill structure of cartilaginous fishes, like the shark, differ from other vertebrates. The patches of pores on the head in the area of the eyes, snout, and nostrils are the openings of the ampullae of Lorenzini. These sense organs are sensitive to the change in temperature, water pressure, electrical fields, and salinity. This shark has a double dorsal fin, considered to be the unpaired fins, located in the median line of the animal. There is also the presence of two spines, one immediately in front of each dorsal fin. The spine is used defensively where it carries a poison secreted by glands at their bases. The large caudal fin is divided into two lobes, a larger dorsal lobe and a smaller ventral lobe. This type of asymmetrical caudal fin is called heterocircle fin. Note how the end of the vertebral column curves upward into the dorsal lobe of the caudal fin. This allows attachment for more muscles, which allow better locomotion for negatively buoyant sharks. And there are two pairs of paired fins located on the ventral side of the trunk, corresponding to the fore and hind limbs of tetrapods. The anterior pair, the pectoral fins, act like an airplane's wings to provide the lift needed to keep the shark from sinking. The posterior pair, pelvic fins are located on either side of the cloacal aperture. They are different in males and females. In male sharks, the pelvic fins become enlarged and their medial borders are modified to form long, rod-like claspers which aid in the transfer of sperm during mating. Since the specimen has no identified claspers, it is considered to be a female. All fins are supported by numerous fine parallel flexible rays or ceratotrichia embedded in the skin. The cloacal opening is located on the ventral surface between the pelvic fins. By spreading its walls apart, the projecting urogenital papilla will be seen within. It receives the products of the intestine, the urinary, and genital ducts. Shark External Anatomy